So, can machines think? This idea, the singularity, the time in history where a computer program will be so smart that it will be able to create another computer program even smarter, and so on and so forth, until humanity's demise ensues. Is that likely? Alan Turing devised a test to test this idea. Ask the question, can machines think? His test was, let's have a computer trying to fool a human into thinking it itself is human by means of conversation. A simple and, you may think, ill-defined test. But would it surprise you to know that almost 70 years on, this test has not yet been passed? Not close. Generic AI, strong AI, the artificial intelligence that can do everything humans can do, and more, and better, is nowhere near here. However, arguably, one of the biggest leaps in that direction is a technology that's called deep learning. In fact, when in the news you hear about developments in AI, more often than not, you are hearing about developments or applications of deep learning. You see, whilst other AIs are capable of solving small problems, such as playing a game or finding the path in a maze, what's exciting and new about deep learning is that it's one technology that can solve a range of different problems. It is what we call a classifier. It's one of the best classifiers yet. But what is that? It can be boiled down to cats and dogs. Imagine you want a computer to be able to distinguish between cats and dogs. You could teach it about the structure, about what they look like. You could teach them specifically to recognize specific patterns. But what's revolutionary about deep learning is that it's entirely based on samples. The only thing you need is many, many samples, many, many pictures of cats and dogs, and the internet has plenty of those. And the system will learn on its own to distinguish between them. And you may think, well, this is a very simple example, and you'd be surprised the number of different problems in the world that can be reduced to just classifying. For example, classifying between a good chess position and a bad chess position. Classifying between an empty road and a road with pedestrians on it if you're building a self-driving car. So deep learning is versatile. And yes, it can be used to solve and play games better than humans. You may have re heard recently about AlphaGo defeating the world's best Go player, and then recently again defeating the world's best Go player, again, the other world's best player. Deep learning has another very important characteristic, which is because we only need samples to train it, we don't need experts. The engineers that built AlphaGo are not expert Go players. They barely need to know the rules, and the system will learn on its own. And it's this same technology that can be applied to a number of problems which capture the imagination of the media from lip reading to medical diagnosis. And what is fascinating is that even though 
it can solve all these problems, deep learning has a number of limitations. We've been hearing today about how to future-proof your life. We've been hearing from our first speaker about having to learn things and about other speakers about being involved with new technology. And the additional contribution I'd like to make is that sometimes new technology can be overrated. Deep learning is powerful, it's exciting. It also has some limitations. As I said, you need lots of pictures of cats and dogs, and we have plenty of those. But when your problem becomes more complex, you need more and more data. And big data quickly becomes the need for a big computing system, which requires a lot of energy and a lot of money. And that's not the only limitation. It was shown recently that you can trick deep learning. You can show it an image of a cat. We love those. Um, and then we can change every pixel in that image by a very small amount in a very clever way. In such a way that the resulting image, to us, still looks like a cat. But the deep learning system will think it's a dog, or a table, or a mug, or whatever you want to trick it into believing. Deep learning is limited, and it's exciting, and it's versatile, and it's powerful. But all those adjectives are shared, I contend, by pretty much every disruptive technology we've encountered. Here's an example. It's called a computer, or a personal computer. And let me ask you this. Do you understand every single electronic component and its function inside your computer or your phone? I know I don't, and that doesn't stop me using them. It doesn't stop me learning about them every day, more and more, as I need. If computers were invented today, and people were saying, they will make your job obsolete, they will render your role irrelevant, well, how would you react? Panic? Complacency? I contend, and this is my challenge to you, that we treat deep learning in the same way that we treated computers. We learn it. And it will be difficult, but so was using spreadsheets the first time around. It may not even be that efficient, but then again, neither were word processors when they first appeared. The good news is, that because the only thing we need to train a deep learning system is examples, samples of data, it is relatively, and I stress, relatively simple to actually implement it. How simple? Nine. Nine lines of code. That's how many lines of code it takes me to write a deep learning program. So here is the idea that I think is worth sharing. Let us do away with this elitism of skill. Let us make the machine learning experts less unique. Let's democratize the use of technology, including machine learning. Go away and find out what those nine lines of code are. And if you don't know how to code, learn how to code. And if you can do it in fewer than nine lines, get in touch. <laughs> My point is, don't panic. Learn to code and learn deep learning.